Blessed is this holy man who was worthy to be numbered among the apostles, for he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and with faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today with the whole church we celebrate the memorial of Saint Barnabas, hmm? Apostle. Hmm? And uh, this feast is very close to my heart because uh, one of the first parishes I was a member of when I came from Nigeria to the U.S. as a, as a young uh, high school graduate was named Saint Barnabas in Alameda, run by Precious Blood Missionaries. So, especially pray for them uh, today as we remember St. Barnabas and also offering the Mass. I had my birthday two days ago, so I said I would especially pray for those who uh, uh, sent out some warm regards, so I'll pray for your intentions today. I will say more about St. Barnabas in the homily, huh? So, my sisters and brothers, God calls us to holiness. God calls us to this perfect love that casts out fear. But sometimes we do not always respond in love. So let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to make intercession for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life, Amen. and let us pray. O oh God, who decree that St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nations, grant that the gospel of Christ, which he strenuously preached, may be faithfully proclaimed by word and by deed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we now are attentive to God's word. the readings for this feast. Huh? A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known in the sight of the nations. He has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song. Sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. Then the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. We sing together. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. With your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Lord Jesus, Christ. Jesus said to the twelve, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts. No sack for the journey or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe away our sins. Amen. And so, my dear sisters and brothers, we celebrate Barnabas, huh? which means uh, the son of encouragement. Son of encouragement. And you know, in these days, we need encouragement, don't we? You know, because we're still passing through the terrible effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Many of us, are, we're not able to gather together because of that. And so maybe on our faith journey, we do need a lot of encouragement at this time. And of course, with the uh, struggle for racial justice as well, and the protests, you know, and all that has happened, you know, with the ki killing or the, of uh, George Floyd, uh, you know, we do need some stirring and encouragement uh, towards life. Hmm? So we can ask St. Barnabas to help us with that. Mm, you know, the rest of the homily, I'm just going to spend some time highlighting some things in the readings that caught my attention we're going to have a little conversation about that and, uh, and then end looking a little bit more closely at uh, how the Spirit transformed and worked in the life of Barnabas. And we're, just, we're wearing red in the first place because tradition has it that he was stoned to death in around the year 61 hmm, for his faith. All right, so I don't know if you remember, but in the reading from the Acts of the Apostles, it says, they sent Barnabas to one of the communities and he saw the grace of God. He saw the grace of God. That caught my eye. 
what did Barnabas see <laughs> in that community? What is this grace of God that he saw? You know? Because it started making me think about how grace has an effect upon our life and the way we live. And that's why Barnabas was able to see this grace. And perhaps the grace is living in love, living in unity, forgiving one another, you know, carrying on in faith. So maybe that's part of what he saw. And so the scripture says he encouraged them, you know, and the word used is a parakaleo, parakaleo. It literally means like when you stand close beside someone, you know, and you're calling them from very close beside, you know. So it's this sense of, you know, someone right beside you kind of urging you on, huh? And there are two things he said. He urged them to faithfulness and firmness of heart. Firmness of heart, in their heart, you know? Um, so those are part of the encouragement we need is remain faithful and set your heart firmly upon the Lord and upon the call that we have, you know? Encouragement. It reminded me of uh, something St. Paul said because um, this, the word encouragement or parakaleo has, to, has two senses. It's comfort, but also exhortation, like teaching. Comfort and exhortation. But Paul says this in 2 Corinthians, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Hmm? So this is Barnabas living out this call. We've received strength and comfort from God, so we give that strength and encouragement to others. Hmm? Okay, that's one thing that caught my eye. The other thing that caught my eye is this line where he said, it says he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And I was thinking, he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. Hmm? And I remembered other parts of the scriptures, you know, where at least in our day-to-day -day, you hear a lot of people say, you know, as long as you're good, you know, that's all that's needed, you know. But there's a sense in which having the Holy Spirit and faith makes a difference in how we live. So I don't know if you remember parts of the Acts of the Apostles where Paul or Barnabas would visit a community and they'd see people and they'd ask them, did you receive the Holy Spirit and there will be like, some of them will be like, oh, no, we, we, did, we don't even know what this Holy Spirit is about. And then they would pray for them to receive the Spirit. And then there was a transformation in their lives, you know? The presence of the Holy Spirit and faith changes our hearts and our lives in a visible way, at least in the Acts of the Apostles. Hmm? So... It just caught my eye with this whole thing about being good and the importance of the Holy Spirit and faith, empowerment from God in order to live as his children. You know, Jesus twice said, you can't even enter the kingdom of God unless you're born of water and the spirit. And then he told his apostles, wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high in order to be my witnesses. Hmm? So it's important to have the presence of the Holy Spirit and faith in order to live and walk as children of God. Okay. Now, what did the Holy Spirit enable Barnabas to do? I just want to end with this. Now, first of all, in Acts, we hear 
that he was among some of the first people who believed. And he sold all that he had and gave the proceeds to the apostles to be given to those who have a need. So the Holy Spirit sort of inspires this great generosity where he's, Barnabas is completely directed towards the needs of others. And he gives from his time, from his talent, and his treasure for the sake of others. That's one thing. The second thing Barnabas does is, after Paul's conversion, Paul was a persecutor of the church. After he converted, many people were not too sure <laughs> about him because he had gone around like persecuting, dragging people out of their homes, killing Christians. And so they weren't sure, like, is this guy really converted or is this just a joke? It was Barnabas who actually took Paul and brought him to the community and welcomed him as part of the community, you know? When I thought of this, I said it, it would be like, you know, I'm sorry to use this image, but it would be like this officer who, who suffocated George Floyd suddenly saying, oh, I, I'm converted, you know. I now am a part of the life of, you know, maybe Floyd's family or the community. It'll be hard to believe. And so Barnabas does something really incredible, reaching out to someone who was an enemy before and bringing him to the community. Now, the other thing was he also had disagreements in his time, you know. He and Paul were going on a missionary journey, and Mark, who wrote the Gospels also, was with them. And... Uh, when they went on a second journey, Paul did not want to take Mark because he had deserted them along the way. But Barnabas insisted on wanting to take him along. <laughs> and that caused a little rift between them. Uh, but we see this, this forgiveness and generosity in Barnabas giving Mark a second chance, you know? He was also a prophet and a teacher in the church. And finally, the last thing I just want to highlight is while they were worshiping together, God set aside Barnabas for another mission. Hmm? So what that teaches us in my understanding is this. If we want to hear God speaking to us now, it is important to participate in the worship of the community. It also said they were fasting and praying. And then they heard God say, set aside Paul and Barnabas for the mission I have for them. So there's this invitation. The word used for worshiping is literally liturgy in, in uh, Greek. Hmm? So somehow participating in the liturgy in prayer and in fasting, in seeking the grace of the Holy Spirit, in living a generous life, the grace of God will be made visible through us as it was in the life of Barnabas. And that is our prayer. And so now, I invite you to join me as we lift up our prayers to the Lord this day. So Lord God, we turn to you with confidence and we pray especially through the intercession of St. Barnabas this day that you be with us and help us to remain faithful and firm in our faith. Your response is, remember your holy people, Lord. Remember your holy people, Lord. Father, you raise your son, our good shepherd, from the dead. Make us his witnesses to the ends of the earth, we pray. Remember your holy people, Lord. 
You sent your son into the world to bring good news to the poor. Give us courage to bring that good news to all peoples, we pray. Remember your holy people, Lord. You sent your son to sow the word of life. Help us to sow his word and to reap its harvest with joy, we pray. Remember your holy people, Lord. You sent your son to make the world one through his blood. May all of us work together for this unity, we pray. Remember your holy people, Lord. You set your son at your right hand in the heavens. Open the gates of your kingdom to those who have died, we pray. Remember your holy people, Lord. And so we take a moment to lift up our hearts and our needs to the God who loves us, sends us his spirit, encourages us on the way. Father, be gracious to us, hear these prayers that we offer on this memorial of St. Barnabas. Help us to be faithful, firm in faith, filled with the Spirit, and encourage this day in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. It's the fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. It's the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash my iniquity, Lord, and cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify with your blessing, we pray, O Lord, the offerings presented here, so that by your grace they may set us on fire with the flame of your love, by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nations, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Barnabas, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so, at our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, power, glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. We offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul. We absolutely need this food for our journey. Just as the Israelites needed that manna to see them through the wilderness. Hmm? And I know we're all aching to be united with Jesus again. So let's together say this spiritual communion prayer. Inviting him to be with us as he is here on the altar. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never Permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We'll continue our prayer as we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly implore you, Lord, that what we celebrate in sacramental signs on the memorial of the blessed apostle Barnabas, we may one day behold unveiled through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go forth to announce the good news of the Lord. Thanks be to God.